All right, so this happens to a lot of people. <laughs> I've been teaching this in little seminars to my clients for the last 20 years, 25 years, and it works like a charm. There's a few things to understand, and you have your drives, defense drive, prey drive, we have fight drive, which is very similar to defense drive. I consider them pretty much the same thing. But to understand those things and understand how most dogs work will have you fully understand why you should do certain things, don't do other things to, to keep you safe, right? So, and I just heard a few days ago from somebody else that I had explained this to and they had an encounter and they said it worked beautifully, the dog stopped the attack and he just left and went away. So, let's go over the common thing that happens to people why they get pursued a dog, where they get pursued by them. Most people, they're walking down the block, streets, wherever they are, in neighborhoods, and a dog comes flying out off a property at the people. Now, the instinct, right, obviously, <laughs> is to start panicking, to start doing that, right, not knowing what to do. Is he really going to attack me? Is he not going to attack me? And all the nerves start going, which is absolutely normal. Now, 99% of dogs are not going to follow through on that attack if you do the right thing. Then we have that 1% that I always talk about in all the other aggression videos I do. Where that 1%, which is rare, right, has this fight instinct, this like, this desire, passion, to attack dogs and people, right, without any fear. Straight up, no matter what the body presents, no matter facing, not facing, and they will just come and hit you. That is very rare, okay? So, we're gonna talk about the majority of dogs here, and then I'll explain the 1%. On YouTube, in human aggression, you'll see me backing dogs down that are very aggressive and bite people. But then when we start walking out and put frontal defensive pressure on, they back off, they back away. And that is the majority of dogs. Okay? Again, with the exceptions. So, what do you do when a dog or dogs come flying off, we're gonna stick with one dog right now, okay? So when one dog comes flying off, rah, 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 and they come out and they're really, you know, putting a show on for you as they're charging you, trying to terrorize you, because there's a game at play right now, even in the dog to do this. He's trying you from a distance while he's on the move towards you. And what you do in return either halts the game or it drives the game into places that the dog never even meant to go. So you must be very careful about your behavior and your movements. So, dog comes charging, rah, 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 making a whole scene coming at you and the best thing you can do is stay still and open up, okay? And you just stay still, and even though you're gonna be terrified inside, right? <laughs> that is normal. <laughs> so you stay there, you just look at the dog, and 
again, the 99%, when you front in a defensive posture, which means it's a confrontation posture, the dogs will hold up about five, six feet from the person who opens up, okay? You make yourself wider, and it's like opening up and going, what? What, you want, you want to do something? You, you know who you're attacking? Watch out, right? So you got to give this presence like, come on, bring it on. What do you think you're going to do? So when you do this and you close up, you're less threatening, look weaker, scared, right? So we open up and we get ready for confrontation, just like other dogs do to others, and they come in, they open up, and they posture on them, they come up, they start to put their heads over other dogs, coming up into a threatening posture, okay? And you're doing the same. So when we do this, now the dog will stay out there, rah, 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 and as long as you face them, they cannot come in that footage to you. Mentally, they cannot do it. It puts a block on the brain and puts intimidation from the forward pressure that they cannot come in and gamble to close that gap. Okay? So, now what are dogs going to do from there? Well, the frontal's too much for them. Now they're going to go look for a weakness. So what do they all do? They all do it. They're going to try to circle one of the sides and see if they can get a weakness. So as long as this is not facing them, if you stayed here and this side is open without any frontal pressure, now, and again also with these kind of dogs, if they do come in from the side and you stayed like this, where are they going to go for you? Majority are going down by your ankle, right? Because they're just as afraid of you as you are of them. So this is all a, a play, a, a chess game, a, right? A bluff, seeing where they can go with this. So if you stayed forward, they came over here, the sides are weakness, the back is weakness, Right? That's why most scared dogs that bite people bite from the sides or behind. Then here you're going to see with Coco, the American Bulldog, one tiny slight adjustment in the body makes his brain unload and attack that he can't help. <laughs> So you see here, I just start to turn sideways and automatically when his brain sees that, takes advantage of it and comes flying in at me and hits me in the sleeve. <laughs>here you see Michelo, as soon as I pass him and the owner, he takes advantage of the weakness of me not looking and my back, where most chicken dogs attack from. So he sees me pass, he pursues me, and then automatically attacks me from behind. And then here you're going to see in this game, talking about the brain pressure, the frontal pressure, and how the chess game works. So when Michelob attacks me and he's trying to hang on but he's doing it from behind, which most chickens do, I just start swinging my body trying to face him and he keeps throwing himself around biting at the suit and can't hang on either because of the pressure because I'm turning into him. So we just keep turning around and he's avoiding my front getting to him.
defensive pressure and threat. So they go to the weaknesses, right, that they don't feel the pressure. But they don't come maul you, right? It's going to be a test, little by little. So they start hunting the leg, right? And if you don't turn with them, they go quick and they go like this and they're out, right? Just in case you turn and face them, they already fly out, okay? So then they'll start circling you again and look for the weakness and not the frontal pressure, okay? Now, if you just stood there and went like this and faced them all the way, they can not come in, right? As long as I keep the facing, they're going to be going rah, 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 all the way around you, rah, 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 right? And if you keep facing them, there's no entry. You're cutting it off. You're stopping the attacks by the front of just keeping your front facing them the whole time, staying in place, and just slowly turning with them. Because they're going to keep that three to six foot, five foot range. As long as we do this and face them, they're going to stay out. Okay, and when that happens, and I've had this happen many times in my career, the moment that they've done that once, twice, now I'm going to pursue them. Now I'm going to turn the tables and get rid of them for good. So they do their little turns, I show them I'm not afraid, right? They've done that a few times and now here we go, I'm going to be the pursuer now. So now it's rah, 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 and all of a sudden I do this to them, and then you see them go rah, 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 and they start running backwards, taking off rah, 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 and I just keep walking, and I keep pursuing them forward. Then you'll see them go rah, 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 and now they're the pursued, right? Now I'm the hunter, and they're the pursued. And they knew from that game of me standing there that I never did this, right? That I was confident, come on. Let's do this. Come in that range. And I'll, right? So I gave confidence that whole time that that dog was playing that game. Now I'm going to be the bully. And now I'm going to come after them. He doesn't have it in him. All right. It's not real. Uh-huh. All right. So this is the kind of dog that we do all week long. Wow. One who appears right. to be tough, yeah. completely coward. Yeah. Right? But when you were telling me his behavior, I already know. Right. Okay, and switch the table, and all of a sudden the dog starts running, still barking like he's got the last laugh of this, right? And then yeah, boom! Right? And you see them go roam! take off and they go to their properties rawr, 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 as their tail is starting to tuck rawr, rawr, and then they go back to their house right and I just stay there right and then I start to turn start to walk away slowly okay that has happened to me many times and it works every time and it's happened to thousands of my clients and it works like a charm now what you don't do, which people always do because they don't know the defensive prey, all this hunt game stuff, they start to go like this, oh, 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 oh. And if you even go sideways with your shoulder at all and start to do this backwards or try to go away, what do you think they're going to do? They see this or your back. They come in right down there again, boom, right, like a herding dog. And then people go, wah, right? But the dog has pulled out already after the snip, not knowing what you're going to do in retaliation. 
So the moment you go, ah, right? This, it turns the hunt on, right? Oh, chicken. And there was a little, ah, a little squeak, right? Turning the dog on, he's getting power. Now it becomes bam, 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 and they start pursuing more. The more you, ah, doing this, the more you're turning on the dog's juices and the hunt that he would never have had if you would have stood your ground and been confident. Now we have a problem because now the dog's going to keep it on, right? Boom, 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 ow, 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 right? Now, if in that moment too, you were doing this and you made a mistake, right? That and the dog snips you, all you would do is turn, right? And face them and they'll run all the way back and not come back in that quick again because you put a quick frontal on them. Wow! That, and you'll see them go right back away. So that frontal pressure works quick, even with the slight. Here, if you were sideways, a slight of this. You'll see the dog take off backwards. Even with just you starting to turn, they'll take off and get out. Knowing the defensive pressure, frontal threat pressure is coming. Okay, so you never, ah! This turn sideways, turn your back to them, right? They snip, ah, and you do that, just like we teach in protection training. Building a dog's hunt, building their passion for biting, confidence. You'll hear us in the videos always go, ah! They bite the suit, ah! Right, the more, ah, we don't face certain kinds of dogs, right? The weaker the defense drive, the more we don't face them, let them bite, and making all sorts of ah, ah, like they're hurting us. Building the confidence, building the drive. The attacks get stronger, the bites get stronger. <laughs> so that is exactly how you bring a protection dog forward, is with all those movements and ah, and the, <laughs> right, the screaming, facing away. So, by, you know, nature, we do the wrong things. So, just never, ever turn and start to turn your back. Don't turn sideways and start to walk sideways and like this, showing all that fear, because they're going to start doing this and hunting that sideways leg and eventually, they get close enough, they're gonna take a shot at that ankle area, lower leg area, okay? Very rare a dog comes up, right, onto somebody up here, higher, because most dogs want to be away from the head area, right? Even in protection with a lot of dogs, that you'll see them go low on the sleeves, Right, we're trying to get them up here, and they go to hit here, and they do, and then they drop, and they go down here because, by nature, most dogs with human now don't want to go to the head area and be close to it in protection because it's a lot of threat factor from the face. Okay, and the stray dogs, especially without any genetics to this, any <laughs> drive drive building. They're just throwing themselves out there and just love to bully people in the streets and threaten people and watch them run and watch them get scared and them hunt them and pursue them, right? So they keep doing it and doing it and doing it because everybody's afraid and they make the wrong moves. Building the dog's confidence with this, with strangers or people walking in the blocks knowing that they're going to get a rise out of people and this will be fun for a little bit, right? So again, you open up, you face them and stay confident. That's going to shut off right away any coming in, any pursuing attacks, okay? Now, if you get that 1%, right, we have a big problem. <laughs> so if you stood like this, they're probably going to come and just attack, right? If you run, you better have a place to get up to because they're going to get you. So, you don't know which dog it is until you actually hold your ground. Okay? 
So if just in case, always carry something with you, had a backpack, great, because you would just block, right, and push and block and keep blocking and pushing at them, right, trying to put that pressure on them, that forward pressure as you block, even though they were going to try to come through it. But with blocking and less of that, you're trying to give them something to bite onto and while flushing them and pushing them back in a way to block your body. So those are really the only things you can do when you have that 1% that will just come through those things. Now, that, ha that does not happen to most people in their lives, having that 1%. It's very rare, right, to the amount of dogs that come off properties and go after people in the street. Okay, so thank goodness it's a rare thing. But with the 1%, if you want to be prepared, you know, have a horn with you, something, you know, a little club, have a backpack and stick little things in there that you can, you know, really have to try fend them off with the backpack, have the horn in their ear, you know, doing those kind of things. Because really that's all you have available to you when you have that 1%. All right, so, and again, luckily the majority of people are going to come across the 99%. That happens and that opening up is going to stop all the nonsense right away except for that very small percentage. All right, and in my career, as far as street dogs go, that me being out in the streets and having a dog attack me, I personally have never had the 1% dog come and just run through pressure and come and bite. You know, in my 25 years of dog training, I have never had that while walking through a street. Many times, thousands of times, I've had dogs run off properties and do that bluff attack. And we just front them and chase them away. Now, when I go into homes for aggression and working with an aggressive dog, I've had many times where the dog just comes and bites straight on with defensive pressure but I have a suit on to protect me, right, just in case, so I don't get hurt, no damage, and I can take care of the problem with that 1%, walking into someone's home and the owner aware that that dog has no fear about this, they just come through and attack anybody coming through the front door, no matter how you stand or what you do. And again, that's not the majority of aggression cases. Right? The majority is the 99% rule again, going into someone's home with aggression. If they try to come, you stay there, do that, and they usually rah, 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 and they don't want to come near me. Then I get the 1% where the owner says, you come in the house, he's coming for you, he's no stopping him, he's not afraid, that's a small, small percentage. So, that is how you should go about a dog blowing off a property, coming out to threaten you, attempting to attack you, and that is the game that is played to keep you safe with the 99%. Hope this helps you, if you ever encounter it, that this will stop it for you, keep you from danger or getting hurt. So, till next time, I'm Richard Hines.